Welcome back to All Tricks, No Treats, the number one life advice podcast. Mm, mm, mm. So, if you guys heard our intro song, it's a little different. It's a little new. Um, if you didn't hear the story of our original song, I paid some guy on Fiverr from like Bangladesh or wherever the fuck. And uh, we heard it on some like home improvement reel. Ad, yeah. Some sort of ad. And she's like, is that our song? And I went back and said, what the fuck? I messaged that guy quick. And he was like, we provide like the animation for your logo. Like we just add a song. That's not what the song isn't custom. The animation is. I said, bro, you're a fucking scam artist. So they just added like one little star flying through the sky. And that was what we paid for. (laughs) If you watch the YouTube video, the intro with our name, all tricks, no treats. That's what I paid for. 300 fucking dollars. I could have figured it out myself. For words, letters to come together. Yes. But, um, so I went to Upwork, which is better, not, not the bootleg version. I think Fiverr is like the bootleg uh, version. Is, doesn't Fiverr have multiple R's? Yes. It's Fiverr. I, oh, maybe. Yeah. I yeah. should have got the You should have known with yeah. the multiple R's. But uh, I hired some uh, Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be rude. And uh, we got like three good songs back. So that was. going to test them out. Yeah. That was number one um the next couple episodes we'll play the other ones and we'd like for you guys to give a little bit of feedback on they're all they're all very good we've been like listening to them and like you've been sending our our uh comments back and forth and stuff so yeah we've got some good ones we're glad we have a updated original one where we don't have to see it on some home improvement video yeah but yeah today is our episode of skeletons in Mm -hmm. the closet in the closet <laughs> we don't have a song for that Wait, we <laughs> this, didn't re- this is our second one so we're not really sure how to do the song is it second or third <laughs> is it i don't know but we didn't rehearse it obviously no yeah um but we- mm, 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 mm. maybe let's like, practice like this? the cup song should i get a cup like anna kendrick <laughs> and, <laughs> and pitch perfect the acapella <laughs> <laughs> that was a butt ice the acapella <laughs> But anyway, it's our skeletons in the closet where we have a hotline where you guys can call or text and tell us anything you want. Uh, Life advice, kids advice, if you want to get something off your chest, a funny Mm -hmm. story. You want to laugh with us, cry with us. We'll fill things together. Yeah. And we'll make fun of you in the process so you don't feel as bad as you do or whatever. (laughs) Hey, well, we're all going through this together. So, uh. Let's feel it together. Yeah, for sure. But um, first, we just want to catch up because we know it's been like two weeks. So let's catch up with our uh, our beers real quick. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm parched. <laughs> Are you parched? I'm two shots You're in. Hot. And I'm sweating. I don't know why you get so hot. I'm sweating and she's like, it's cold in here because I have the AC at like 69. My toes are blue. My hands are And mine are numb. red because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Oh, yeah, baby. Ooh, that butt ice is crispy. Ooh, it's very cold. So, so let's here catch up. we go. I know we talked about this before, but we went on a trip. But before we went on our trip, we actually, the night before, we had our 6 a.m. flight. 6 a.m. <laughs> 6 a.m. with three kids. Smart with the, LAX. Two, with the two-year-old, four-year-old, and seven-year-old. We were very smart to book a 6 a.m. flight and plan a night out before yes so we went to five points amphitheater which we love in irvine very great, cool very cool great venue yeah and we saw slightly stupid there were two other opening bands but atmosphere was there if you grew up when we did when we did in high school around 2004 five six atmosphere was a big deal is a big underground rapper the band and um we didn't even know he was playing no we didn't we saw something about atmosphere we heard something about it. we were like oh maybe it's that we were like is this the atmosphere is this atmosphere like we don't know who it is yeah so originally sublime was supposed to be playing and we didn't know that the card was kind of switched up and we had our beers we we're hanging out with our aunt and uncle chris and shelly shout out we love going to shows with them and uh we were walking up to the spot where we entered to our seats and uh we heard we're atmosphere from minneapolis and me and Brianna looked at each other like, what the, the fuck? Don't let the man just drove by. Oh, fuck. We missed him. <laughs> <laughs> he drove by very fast. He had a little umbrella over. Damn. Sorry, where is he going? We have a view of our outside front yard. And 
We live in an area where there's <laughs> no a lot of men. <laughs> more white people. <laughs> so we we stopped them one time and we bought like six things. We had workers here and I bought them shit too. And I, I was like, damn, our neighbors are probably like, oh no, they're going to bring this guy <laughs> <Yeah>. here. <laughs> anyway, back to the atmosphere story. Yeah, sorry. I was like, this isn't atm- this can't be atmosphere. He is from Minneapolis. They are from there. And she's like, was it the atmosphere? And I said, if it's the atmosphere, it's, it's different. not him. Yeah. yeah. So we go and she's like, it sounds like him. And I said, this is fucking slug. This is atmosphere. Dude, I was I got emotional. It was fucking insane. I feel like all the bands that I've been wanting to see, like Blink, uh, Touche Amore, Atmosphere. This year has been like incredible. Musically, yeah, The Cure. Yeah. And I was like screaming my heart out to a lot of the songs and uh our aunt and uncle were like damn he really does like them <laughs> but they were like a big high school underground so big band. i just remember his face dude his face on the cover of the i remember on my ipod like you know how it used to show the little picture yeah his face yeah it for was just sure straight on his face and i'm like a big fat sick hungry dude all the time and <laughs> And uh, I don't have that much energy is what I'm getting at. And when I found out it was him, I was like a kid again. And I was jumping and screaming and yelling and like drinking beers more than I drink really. And I was, it was fucking insane. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. It was a good surprise. It was fun. And I do want to talk about something that he said when he was talking about one of his songs. He said, I want to let my son know that I hear him. And that was very, I like we've said before, we, you know, growing up, we've learned things from our parents and it just goes to show that we're learning that we want our kids to, you know, know yeah. that we're listening to them. And For I thought sure. that was very cute. I yeah. liked it a lot. He's he's a cute dad. He's cute. He's yeah. cutie. He does have a little white patch in his hair. Dude, he's, dude, he's getting oh. old. I don't even know how old he is, but they're still doing it. And hey, yeah, he's still got all the energy. They're killing it. They had good vibes, good stage presence. Everyone was into it. I know there was a lot of people that really, really didn't know them, but it was fucking incredible. It was nice. It was nice. So after that, we got home. We slept maybe like two hours, two hours. Yeah. And then we woke the kids up, got in the car. We drove to LAX. We woke up at like 5 a.m. 440 or something i woke up at 4 30 yeah i got a i felt kind of cool because i got us like a cool car a big suv with the guy with the black suit on and i was like oh, he was nice. we're riding in style baby but uh we had to get up early so and early. when i travel i like to catch a red eye because i feel like that's a a cheat code on an extra day but it's technically technically not no it is it's like the best way to get the bang for your buck you get there early in the morning you take maybe a little nap in the car same thing yeah. we did in salem sure and then you explore the whole during day. the day yeah for sure yeah. so we we got there pretty early and our flight was um i like what six something six fifteen mm-hmm. and uh was perfect the flight was the smoothest flight in the world the and the flight f- was very good the pilot's name was karen a woman and she i love you karen it was the most like was smooth so flight you can ever ask for. We were, I, I was very worried about just the kids. Uh, it wasn't Champ's first flight, but it was Bubby and Nucky's first flight. Uh-huh. So we had a two-year-old, four-year-old, the first flights. And I was very nervous about what we were going to, because, you know, you see those videos of little mm-hmm. kids like. And Yelling. You, yeah. And you don't want to bother anyone around you because we're all in the same little metal ship together. Yeah. But, um. So we were very nervous, but we got on. Uh, we got them little. Actually, yeah. Shout out to who did we fly with? JetBlue. JetBlue. Shout out to JetBlue because they were very good. That was my first time flying with JetBlue. Yeah, me too. And uh, Bubby was sitting by me. Uh, Champ and Nucky were with Brianna. The plane was half empty. Thank God, thank because God. we had nobody by us, and they the kids were free to stand up and mm-hmm. do whatever. But. Um, we were on the runway and Bubby kept asking me, Oh, are we leaving yet? Are we leaving? And I said, here we go. And the plane started going. And I'm like, all right, it's picking up. You need to be a big girl. But if you want to hug my arm, you go ahead. And as soon as the front wheel started lifting, I was looking over at her and she looked at me and she said, is there any snacks? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, bitch. <laughs> I said, I'm terrified. What, what do you mean? 
I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I was just like shocked because I was like, dude, I thought she was going to be scared. But she was like super chill. Nucky was super chill. Nucky was so good. So we um, saw that the TVs uh, were working. Yeah. And um, we were like, okay, let's buy some headphones for all three of them. So I walked up to the, is it steward if you're a man or stewardess? I have no idea. Those guys were stewardess. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? And call him Stuart. Yeah, Stuart, <laughs> little. Little, little Stuart. Little we walked Stuart. up to little Stuart. And I was like, um, can I um, buy some headphones? And he said, um, oh, yeah, here, you just, here, just take it. And he gave me one. And I was like, oh, my God, I need two more, sir. And he yeah. said, here, just take them. So he gave us free headphones. Yeah, and they were like seven bucks each or something. Yeah, and so the kids had headphones. They were watching the movie when we were taking off. I was wor- very worried about Nucky's ears because little kids' ears pops. Pop yeah, on the plane. Here's a trick. Let's hear it. Usually they say if you have a baby and you're taking off on a plane to give them a bottle or breastfeed or something like a juice or a lollipop, something to get like their like mouth moving because sure. it makes sure that their ears don't pop. Nice. Yeah, but it was good. We had a good trip. Yes. So real quick, I know we've been talking about this for a minute, but <clears throat> we flew up to Seattle and we drove all the way down. Um we hit Seattle, Portland, Portland, Boise. Port we Portland sucked. We didn't yeah. like Portland, so we actually stayed one night. We planned on two, and then we went to Boise instead. Yeah, nights. and then we ended in Vegas, which we love Vegas oh, so much. So much. Out of the whole trip, Vegas was probably the best. But a thing about Seattle and Portland, what's similar about that is you could see homeless people smoking crack right on the fucking. And meth right on the street. There was foil on the floor. (laughs) I said, hey, here's another fucking crackhead. And the guys, the kids are always like, what is that? They don't know what it is. I call them zombies, but Brianna doesn't like me to refer. But I like when they, I tell them, yeah, you yell at them, yell. And they're like, hey, zombie. No, that's not nice. (laughs) That's their whatever. Fuck them. They want to choose that. I don't okay, care. Well, they're still human beings. All right. We'll touch on like our trip uh, probably next episode. I think we should like talk about what we did so people could like see where they could go and if they haven't been there. But cool. Let's get some skeletons out of those skeletons. closets. We have like three people who hit us up via text and then we have one voicemail. So let's read. Uh, let's read some messages. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the first one. So they message story time warning. This happened 10 years ago. I'm a completely different person now. Somewhat, LOL. Oh. My situationship. Thank you for responding to one of our episodes. We appreciate that. Nice. We got the terms. My situationship was getting rocky and he was seeing other girls, but would lie saying they were just friends, quote unquote. Uh. One day, his friends (sighs) was acting too controlling. Over him? I guess in whatever situation they were in. He told me to stay home. We shared a studio together. Woman's intuition told me to go to the gig he was going to. I called my friends and we showed up. Hmm. When I got there, he was too drunk to notice I was there. Sheesh, you're a fucking ninja. Oh, and I mean, good for you and your friends. Good for you. good friends too. But this points out that this guy was having a good enough time where he wasn't even thinking about you, which makes him kind of an asshole. You think that's the only part that makes him an asshole? Not, not the only part, but that's in addition to the other two or three things that we've already read. <sighs> My, I'm sweating now. I'm not cold anymore. I was there for a good two hours. Holy Wait, shit. Wait, what was, was this person watching him the whole time? You were watching They him weren't the- even watching the show. They were just focused, zeroed in on that, him the whole that, time. That's the toxic I like. <laughs> you're, La waiting, you're letting hey, it boil I, I feel you you're letting it boil Toxica. i was there for a good two hours when i seen he was leaning hugging up against his friend mm. i approached him and when he realized it was me he yelled oh shit while the girl ran away this <gasps> is so many red flags and the girl ran away this is obviously mm. a deal breaker mm. <clears throat> mm. i told him this is what you do while I'm at home. Cool. And walked away. That I haven't are, read I haven't read the rest, but thanks for not just popping him square in the fucking jaw. Oh, I was gonna jawbone. say you're a way better person than I am. He approached me and got in my face. One thing <gasps> led to another and we started throwing hands <gasps> at a backyard gig. Oh. 
He tried to get me in a headlock. Oh. And I was uppercutting him. A group of my guy friends separated us and were going to beat his ass until they seen uh-huh. his face all bloody. Damn, he blooded his face. Nice. I ain't trying to fight with you, get bitch. Get it. Get it. <laughs> his two homegirls were going to jump me, but my friends circled me to protect me. He got back in my face and went a second round. I left him on the floor and was leaving the gig. He came running after me crying, saying, friend wants to say sorry and for me to kick him out. Oh, my God. The friend wanted him to say sorry to her? That's fucking Wait, insane. the friend that was circling? <clears throat> the friend that was no, going to be... his, his quote-unquote friend. The girl wanted him Wa- to say... <gasps> Wait, okay. His quote-unquote friend wanted to say sorry to this person that yeah. was being cheated on. Yeah, and for him not to kick him out of his house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god plot twist plot, plot twist wait it's not done plot twist i was five months pregnant when this oh. went down <gasps> oh my god i'm sorry and you got in a fight that's crazy first of all this guy's an asshole i hope i'm sure you're not with him but for him to do all this shit and the friend saying, don't kick him out, please. Like, please don't kick him out. Ugh, who are you? If she was just a friend, he wouldn't have been hiding this whole situation to begin with. If he was just a friend, he wouldn't have replied, oh shit, the moment he saw you. And her running away, that's fucking crazy. You did good. You beat his ass. Hey, you well, did so good. I'm proud pregnant. of you. One thing I'm kind of disappointed, I wish your homeboys fucked his ass up too. That would have been tight. But maybe, you know what? You you tough. Maybe you you're, got you did it all. Hell yeah. Um, I hope you're not in that situation. Thank you for the story. That was fucking juicy. That was that was a good story. And on, honestly, I don't know who you are, but hey, message me. I want to be friends with you. <laughs> you're a badass. <laughs> I want to be friends with you. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, writing in. That was yeah. Nice. I hope, you know, I hope your life has flourished. I hope you have mm-hmm. nothing but positivity. You don't have that negative people, anything in your life. I hope you're doing, I hope you, you're doing real good. And, uh, this happened 10 years ago. So I hope your kids fucking killing it in life. Both you of might you. might be like 10 years old, probably. Both but, of you. But, uh, yeah, that was the first story. Thank <coughs> you for writing in. On to the next one. All right. I'm a newly single mama and haven't been single in years. Capitalized years. We're talking almost eight. Being together with with someone for eight years, side note, is a long time. That's a big part of your life. So I think being single after that long is... A lot of things have changed. Is gnarly, yeah. Yeah, that's a big change. You know, you're a new person. I mean, even just, you know, that outside environment, you know, dating has changed. People have changed. That's, That's a big thing. I decided this weekend, instead of working, quote unquote, kids with dad... To take a spontaneous trip to Vegas with nice. someone I'm seeing. Ooh. Call me crazy, reckless, whatever. But I've never, ever in my entire life done anything this last minute slash spontaneous and batshit crazy. I'm excited to live my life for me and be a little messy along the way. Ain't posting a damn thing while I'm there and location off. Be back in three days, laughing face. I love that. Good for you. Girl, be as messy as you want to be. You deserve it. Yeah. So, again, like eight years is a long time. And after separating with someone, in my opinion, it's hard to it's hard to move on or it's hard to talk to someone. But at the same time, if someone sees interest, it's it feels good, especially like you said, you have kids um, we're older now. I don't know how old this person is, but they have kids. So I'm assuming maybe our age, but, um, if someone's into you, it feels good. Yeah. You it's get good to have feelings. that little like spark, especially, I don't know what happened in the marriage, but you know, obviously something happened to where it wasn't there anymore. So yeah. to feel like something else to make this person excited and to feel like, let me go do this. That's, that's a good thing. Yeah. And you're allowed to, so mm-hmm. you deserve it. Yeah. I always tell Brianna, I hate that Drake fucking said this, but it, you only live one life. You you live once. Yellow, you yes. yellowing forever. And you can't let shit stop you from doing things you want to do, for doing yeah. things that make you feel good. Um, so especially other people. Yeah, and you've said you've never done anything like this. Like you're allowed to do this. Yeah. You're allowed to 
make bad decisions. Not saying that that was a bad decision, but you're allowed to make decisions that you never have previously. So I hope you had a good time. Hopefully yeah. you send us uh, what happened. Live life for yourself, <laughs> especially being a mama of kids. You know, um, you're living your life for your kids. So I'm yep. glad that you were able to take that time. No work. Live it for yourself. I hope you had all the shots. I hope you had all the butt ice. I hope you had all the dick. <laughs> all the messiness you want all the messiness baby all right I, I, can you next skeletons in the closet call in and just tell let us, us know the, how it went tell us the deets baby <laughs> we'll pump you up even more yeah hell yeah all right thank you so much for thank uh, you. that yes, call as well I love that. so this next one is a voicemail mm. let's hear the voicemail who's brave enough to leave a voicemail we got it right but here. still, these are all anonymous. We don't know who these people are. That's why we're yeah. like, oh, we don't know. Yeah. Here we go. You guys are so cute. <laughs> I love that greeting. Um, hi. Uh, okay. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Long story short, I've been talking to someone for about three months. And, I mean, things have gotten pretty serious, all except for the fact that we're, we're not official, we weren't official. Um, and I just decided to end things because I felt like I was begging for his attention at, at, you know, at this last point. And I don't want to have to beg for someone's attention. Uh, so anyway, um, I, so I ended things a couple days ago, about five days ago, six days ago, and he never responded. And it really hurt my feelings that he didn't respond to me ending things because I felt like so disposable. Like, you're not going to even give me a goodbye or I wish you well or not even a fuck you, like nothing. And what hurts more than someone being angry or like, hating you is when they don't care. Does that make sense? I've always said the antithesis of love is not hate, it's apathy because someone who is so apathetic to you or to anything in life is like as if you're non-existent. So that's how it's made me feel. Anyway, I can already feel Chris Garza rolling his eyes <laughs> at me. But anyway, he finally responded today like a week later and what do I do? Just what do I do? Do I ignore that text? Do I acknowledge that he texted me? Do I, I mean, the text was pretty much like him saying sorry, but he didn't necessarily say like, he wants to meet up again. I don't know. I don't know what I should do. Um, I do miss him, but I don't want to have to beg for someone's attention. So what do I do? Love you. Damn, that was a fucking deep ass voicemail. But we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, a couple things. There's a lot of variables in this, the situation yeah. and how we have to respond. So one thing, dating three months. When people date, typically it's not usually with one person. So three months might seem a long time to some people, but it's not that long in reality. Especially if you haven't had that exclusive talk, which she said they're not official. Yes. Yeah. Um, number two, you feel like you're begging for his attention. Mm, yeah. To me, that's your fucking answer. Yeah. Guys are being guys. Guys are, are doing their own thing. Um, I'm glad that he responded and it made you a little hopeful. But again, guys will do anything to keep something going. That's good. If you're hooking up, if you're again, showing him attention, like not that it's bad for you to keep responding to him or keep t trying to text him, but it feels good to be wanted. So he might be in a situation where, Oh damn, that feels good that she's texting me and trying to get a hold of me. Um, but again, he could be doing his own thing. And I mean, I'm not trying to be like a dick, but he can always go back to you and give you a fucking 
sentence or paragraph wrapped up with a bow to make you feel like, okay, he's, he's interested in me again. So take it with a grain of salt. And I think you should focus on you, have fun, date other people, and don't put all your eggs in one basket because nobody deserves that. Everyone deserves to find true happiness and you need to find it anywhere, not just in one place. So I do agree with you. Um, I do think that it's hard being not, I'm doing air quotes, not official and not being able to, obviously you can't control what the other person does. You, you know, you are kind of in this little situationship where you don't know what's going on, you know, because as girls, we always like to think that we, you know, we want more. We would like to think that more is coming of it, whatever our situationship is, you, you know, that it could eventually lead to something. Cause that's what we all date for, right? Sure. We all date for someone who is going to be our lifetime companion. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we want. So I get that. I get wanting to be with someone and choose someone who's going to, you know, come from a situationship and turn into a lifetime companion. But at the same time, I do agree with you. You're not official, so it is it's very gray. It's a very gray area to know like where you go from here, what you do from here. And that's the worst that's the worst part it about is. dating. The worst part about dating is you don't know. Like you don't you don't know what you can say, you don't know what you can do because you know, you don't want to do one thing and eventually you turn them off where they're like, Oh, yeah, it's definitely a risk being in that area where you are when you're, I don't know if you're ready to make it exclusive, but even if you bring up the conversation, um, saying, Hey, where are we? Mm -hmm. Like, do we see this, see yeah. this going forward? That's actually going to be a topic. It obviously could lead one of two ways. It could stay the same, just as, it, as confusing as it is, or they could say, yeah, let's move this into, but as a man, if I'm there already, I'm bringing it up as a man. I know people are like, eh, anybody could, the girl could say it or the guy. We know if we want to move it forward or not. So I think as a man, you should step up and say, I want to move forward. It, it's a risk for you to bring it up. So yeah, I you think, have a decision to make. I think traditionally we are used to the guy saying that and in initiating it and us as, you know, someone else with them. Taking the lead. Being yeah. Being a man following and yeah. saying okay yeah let's let's do this and that's what we all want but i my number one thing is girl i never want you to feel like you're less than oh girls girls gang yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> the bang gang bang gang I never want anyone to feel like they're less than or like they're, they don't deserve anything because you, you do, you do, you really do. You deserve the most. You deserve the best. I don't even know you, but I, <laughs> 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 I think all girls, all anyone who is, who's willing and ready for that, that you deserve the world. So I don't think that you should be sitting here and waiting for someone or um, being made to feel like you're not enough because you are. And I know that whoever you are, there is, um, there's a million people out there who would be willing and lucky to have you. So I think you, like he said, you, you got your answer, you know, good on man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good advice <laughs> listen and again like who knows maybe this could turn out good we we just don't know but yeah we don't hopefully we get an update and and it's a, a good one yeah you just deserve to be happy so yeah hopefully whatever your update is is whoops <laughs> even if you are still with that person and things are better or if you've moved on and you know you're having fun i i agree with you though have fun don't have put fun. all your eggs in one basket go out go out girl yeah 
take Listen. take Brianna. <laughs> <laughs> take me with you. Let's let's go to some CD bars. Yeah. Let's let's Meet find some you boys. someone. Let's find you someone. Yeah. Thank you so much yeah. though. Uh, we appreciate your call. Okay, we have one more. Okay, one more. Overbearing mother-in-laws <laughs> and making friends with your partner's friends spouses. Okay, so let's break both of these down. Uh, the first part is overbearing mother-in-laws. I did you did you write this? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot inhale. I'm sorry. I'm gonna like inhale these butt ice into I'll, my nostrils. I'm, I'm not trying up. to get into too much detail, but no. as some of you know, I don't really talk to my family anymore. We don't. Yes. Which I mean it sucks, but um, I guess Brianna might have been in that boat for a little bit, <laughs> so she could relate. I might have. Yeah. Oh. So what do you think about this? What do you got to say? I mean, we all hear the stereotypical version of in-laws. So we all know, you know, where people are like, "Ugh, my mother-in-law. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to go into a lot, but it sucks. It sucks to have someone as an in-law who is domineering. Uh, Belittling. Catty, you know, cuts things off, makes you, because I'm a very... I'm a very empathetic person. I'm someone who is very, um, I don't like drama and I don't like uh, confrontation. If it comes to me, <laughs> I'll put up with it and I'll, you know, do what I have to do, but I would much rather avoid it. Um, so to have an overbearing in-law, it sucks a lot to have someone who s oversteps their boundaries because the biggest thing as a parent, as a spouse is your boundaries. Yeah. And to have someone who comes into your relationship and puts their two cents, more than two cents, puts their dollar fifty in <laughs> way more than they should. Yeah. It's a lot and it sucks. And it also puts a strain on your relationship mm -hmm. in, as a parent with your um, spouse. It sucks. So I get that. It's very hard. But the advice I have for you is. I heard this one time I something happened to me in like third or fourth grade. I don't even remember. But one of the noon duty aides came up to me and I was really sad. They were like, you know what? You got to just be like a duck. And when the water gets on the duck, they just let it roll off their back. You just water off a duck's back. Yeah. You just got to let it roll off your back. You know, I'm, there's been a million times where I've been like, <sighs> OK. And I've just had to do the deep sigh and just be the bigger person and move on because I never wanted it to affect my relationship with my husband or, you know, my relationship or my kid's relationship with their grandparent. I yeah. mean, obviously things are different now, but. And listen, I mean, being in a relationship growing up, um, we're programmed to love family and be around family and friends. And that's what life's about. And I think I've gone through enough things and I'm at a point where I'm successful enough and I have my own family to say, fuck family. You need to do what you need to do to be happy, whether that's with friends or a girlfriend or wife and kids. Uh, my kids are my life and I refuse to have them around any negativity, anything that makes them question like what's going on like whoa this is crazy to to be around you know like like a relationship if a relationship with someone is meant to be it'll happen if you fall out with your family and it's meant to be you guys will rekindle apologies will be made you guys will grow and mature but until then fuck everyone you need to look out for you and your own so don't try to get approval from family or mother-in-laws you do you you do what makes you and your partner happy and they should support you your spouse yeah. should support you your kids should support you so i mean damn this is getting a little deep but i think um, that's the hardest thing is the spousal support because there are times where the spouse is cut in half like they're like well you're my husband or wife but this is my parent this is my mom that's so true at the end of the day you stay true to yourself. Yeah. You'll feel a hundred percent better if you stick to your guns and you stick to your beliefs. So hey, um, let's use some Jonah Hill lingo. 
don't let your boundaries be crossed. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. keep, stick to your stick to your boundaries. Yeah. Fuck the noise. Fuck everybody. So yeah. just be happy. We we live too fucking short to worry about family and mother in laws and father in laws yeah. and whatever. So overbearing mothers ultimately they're just a person yeah they're they're nobody to you you start your own life you figure your own life out but good uh, luck that's the first one uh come hang out with us yeah we'll we'll talk yeah we'll talk way deep we're a small (laughs) tight-knit unit (laughs) so the second part is uh making friends with your partners friends spouses that's a good one as well Mm -hmm. i think um when we were dating I didn't really like any of your friends. <laughs> no, when we started dating, you were such a hater. And I don't know why. I Maybe it because I was... I don't like people in general. No new friends. And I'm territorial. Like, even with my family growing up, that's a, that's a big part of my family's uh, identity, too, is they're territorial people. That's part of the overbearing mother-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> So it was hard for me to accept a lot of her friends, even her friends' husbands. I was like, fuck them. <laughs> like, I, I don't know why. I've always had, like, this mindset. But I think over time, you'll enjoy the company because mm-hmm. I used to say, and Brianna hates this, that I was a lone wolf. Like, I had a few friends. I was friends. just going to say that. I, I had a few friends, but at the end of the day... I look out for me only until I got her and I got our kids. They're the only ones I care about. So um, other people I didn't give a shit about. I didn't care about her best friends and her best friend's husbands or what they were going. Like she'd tell me the tea. Don't don't get me wrong. I love the fucking drama. I love to stir the pot, baby. Oh, he's got his big wooden spoon. <laughs> yep. But, He'll come with it. But to make friends with him, I mean, I didn't care. Like I... Uh, yeah they were an afterthought of like us like i all right they're gonna come around sure i guess but over time um i think i grew a love for for them i i love them as much as you and i would help them out if they needed it um and yeah and whoever they're with whoever they're surrounded by i think because our family is so small um it's okay for me to love. Oh, are you going to cry too? Are you crying too? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but same for you. It's okay for you to be territorial, yeah, quote unquote. It is. It's okay for you to keep uh, your partner and your babies close. But as you grow, uh, you'll learn and you'll accept that it's okay to make friends, to let them in yeah. your life, to let people in your life. As long as it's not fucking toxic or weird um it's okay to be surrounded by by love so i am a big not advocate but i'm a big believer of drake no new friends no new friends (laughs) yeah yeah, we're it's a big drake day guys um but yeah no new friends i've got my core group of friends like you know that's all i need in life they're my sisters but like we said we have a very small we have a very small family. We don't have a lot. And um, my best friends are, you know, they're all I need. Even before he came along, they're all I need in life. They're, you know, everything, you know, my supporters, whatever. But that's for him, too. Those are your guys. Your friends are the ones who have known you, you know, some of them longer than I have. Some of them know you better than I have. They have a lot of memories with you. They have a lot of um, good times with you. And Uh so coming into a relationship where your partner has friends, someone who, you know, want to spend time with them. It's hard. It's hard to be like, okay, who is this? But also same thing about boundaries. As long as they're not overstepping their boundaries of not just you, but your relationship, that's what you need to keep in mind. If they're not making you feel uncomfy, if they're making you feel uncomfy, then you need to say something to your significant other. Yeah. Especially Um, if they're making anything in your relationship feel uncomfy, you need to say something to again. Um, But, 
you know, as someone who is an introvert, I'm an introvert. I'm not, no, like I said, no new friends. I'm not like, come on, guys. I'm not like a big, you know, yeah. person to do that. But those, that's your significant other's family. That's your significant other's friends. So yeah. you just got to, you know, no one says you have to be best friends with them. But just kind of take it day by day. You know, they obviously love the person that you're with. So stay yeah. true to yourself, but also keep in mind that your significant other loves him for a reason yeah i think just kind of be open to it i know it's hard oof i know it's hard it's hard it's very hard but take a shot and just <laughs> roll take with a it. little flask you yeah. drink throughout the day and yeah maybe, to... hey maybe they'll share it in your flask with you yeah they yeah. uh the liquor always uh Goes turns you to quicker. someone else <laughs> <laughs> the liquor, liquor goes quicker uh, but anyway yeah that's all we got that's what we got. Damn, I think we got, instead of making fun of you guys, I think we felt for you guys. Oh, we felt with this you guys. was a very, I told I told you guys, I said, I'm empathetic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What else so, we got? That's it. That's it. But thank you for um, leaving your skeletons out of the closet with us. Yeah. If you guys have any thing you want advice on or to clear up things or want our opinion on, you guys could text us leave a voicemail call us call, yeah whatever yeah and we'll or play, dm us yeah we'll play it for you guys um on our next skeletons in the closet and we'll tell you what we think and what yeah. we feel and these are fun because we do like to um we do like to get to know the people who are with us in this journey who listen to us who fill the things with us so um if you have a skeleton in the closet you would like to uh release uh-huh our phone number is five six two four five seven zero six one three i gotta memorize now that was good Woo-hoo. say it five, again six two four five seven zero six one three <laughs> <laughs> all right guys um the next episode will have our second <laughs> intro that we received we'd like for you guys again to let us know how you like it but um other than that we'll catch you on the flip-flop later <laughs>